I'd like to spend the next 15 minutes talking about a topic that we're very close to as we look at the travel sector uh, when investing in it. Um, one of the things that I think is very important when you think about this category is uh, you have to think about it maybe in a different way. And a lot of people tend to think of it as more of a funnel, and we like to think of it as an hourglass. I'd like to walk through that today. So I think uh, right behind me is this is a funnel, and, and, and one way to interpret, I think, the online travel ecosystem is, is more of that of an hourglass. And what that means is really at the top of the funnel, you have something called inspiration and planning. Every one of us in this room probably has a different way of planning, a different way of using resources online, maybe social services, and using things like TripAdvisor. Most entrepreneurs will then move to arriving at the destination. It's almost from point A to point B. But what often happens is that you then arrive in your destination, what happens there in that economy, what we'll call the local economy. And I think that's very important to realize. And there's opportunities and hurdles associated with each. And it's something that we've looked at probably for the last year across hundreds of companies that we reviewed uh, investing in early stage companies here in New York City. So, when I built this slide, one of the things that I wanted to think about was what's, what's the best representation when you interpret this hourglass as we consider it? And this red area behind me is what a lot of entrepreneurs have tried to build, which is largely in the inspiration and planning sectors. And something that you often see is that it's very, very difficult to reach consumer scale. It's almost extremely impossible to do that today if you don't have a large marketing budget or you have some crazy social hook to your product. And I think one of the things that's really important about this category is that, like we talked about earlier, is that there's no commonality across each of the different stages of your inspiration and planning process. So it's really, really hard to build a product that works. And I think the other thing that's really important is that it's actually very cheap to build these products today because of the social web. And generally, it's fairly straightforward to build a mobile app and hopefully get scale within the App Store or Google Play. But I think the biggest thing is that you don't have repeat usage. And that's something investors tend to think about quite often. So, when you think about this category, it, the way that we've interpreted it largely is that it's very hard to get spectacular output when you think about the marginal input that you're putting in, largely in this category. But that's not necessarily to say that there is an opportunity at the top of the hourglass. And I think one of the things that we've looked at is that there, there is some areas that, that's really exciting. I used to work at a company called TravelZoo, and I know a few folks here are in the room. There you guys are. Hey. Um, Travels has built an amazing company really around this topic, around this very vertical focus or thesis-driven community. A lot of the travelers on Travelzoo or some of these early stage companies behind me, Atlas Obscura or Trekable, really have an aligned interest around what they're working on. In the case of Atlas Obscura, it's actually quite interesting. If you remember growing up, I grew up in New Jersey, they had a magazine called Weird New Jersey. Um, has anybody heard of Weird New Jersey before or Weird Magazines? Oh, okay, cool. Um, so one of the things that's interesting about this business is that it's largely a content community around folks that are obscuring odd destinations. And people will actually leave, say, San Francisco and go all the way to London to explore something very odd under the bridge. And then in the case of Trekkable, Trekkable is also exciting too. There's a very large population of disabled and accessible travelers. However, there's no resources and tools for them. So there's this massive void in the market, and these two companies are trying to fill that. But I think one of the things that's really, really exciting and where you tend to see most of the value built within the category of travel, and when you think about investing in this category, is largely around the booking. So most companies, largely TripAdvisor, you're starting to move in that direction, plus the OTAs, the online travel agencies, that many, some are actually in this room today, the Pricelines, the Expedias of the world. There's incredible value in actually owning the transaction. And we're starting to see that with a few companies that have now been built over a few years. Sam's here from Hotel Tonight. I think he's going to be speaking a little bit later. He's built an amazing product, largely just on mobile, for the new traveler. Right? And that's around the booking. And I think in the case of Airbnb, which we'll talk about in a bit, Airbnb has been able to do something that I think is very, very tough in the marketplace. They've been able to standardize marketplace products, which is generally the rooms that you're in, in a very trustworthy experience in terms of the booking. So these are the two opportunities that we think about largely from a thesis-driven community and also new booking products and new booking channels at the top of the funnel. But I built a business uh, in 2008 where I lost most of my hair in that journey in the local economy. And, and one of the things that I realized about it is that there's lots of similarities into travel as well as what hap what's happening in local. And one of the things that's become really exciting in the category is that you're seeing this merger of both the top of the hourglass as well as the bottom of the hourglass, which is what you're in destination. 
in terms of what you're building there. And that's really the local economy as we think about it. But uh, there's, a, there's a cautionary tale, I think, associated with this. On both curves, or both ends of the spectrum, right, at the top of the funnel, uh, which is inspiration and planning, and at the bottom is just purely local products, it's really, really hard to build consumer scale. So, and I, and I think a good way to associate that is that many entrepreneurs and many investors in the early days of, say, a company like Priceline thought of Priceline as a consumer product. But in fact, almost out of necessity, they had to build the back end, which we're going to talk about in a second, almost if you have to think about turning around this hourglass. Now, the reason they had to do that is that the value is in the booking. And I think what you're starting to see is that because it's not a lot of repeat usage, largely from leisure travelers or business travelers, most companies are trying to build within this area in terms of the local, the local piece. But investors like this category largely for two reasons. It's highly repetitive. Every one of us needs to drink water and eat food here. Every one of us needs to have uh, a roof over our heads, right? So investors are putting their money, you've largely seen it in recent funding announcements and explosion in valuations on the private side, as well as movements that you've seen from, say, a TripAdvisor buying a La Fourchette largely one of the largest uh, restaurant booking products in Europe. And I think there's more value to be extracted in the local economy, and you're starting to see more of that. So this is the part of the, the hourglass that we get really, really excited about. Um, and it's something that I think we've thought about a lot, and we've looked at a lot of companies and, and kind of worked through this, this thesis with them over the last year. And this is almost if you think about flipping the hourglass behind you. Um, and this is what we'll call the back end, right? Um, the back end or the enterprise segment of the market. And what often happens in this category is that you need to be really patient. It, it takes years to build infrastructure. It takes years to build the technology. It takes years to build the supply relationships in terms of actually enabling infrastructure for booking. A great company here is Silver Rail. Um, it's a perfect example of this, right? It's taken them four plus years to build effectively a booking engine and more of the inventory management system for Rails. Rails is probably one of the largest pieces of the travel ecosystem that's largely been left unconquered, and they're doing that in Europe right now. But it's taken them a very long time to build that tech. And I think when you think about that, why is that exciting? The reason it's exciting is it's not crowded, it's not noisy, there is defensible tech that's there, and oftentimes the amount of money that you can extract from your suppliers will only grow over time as the product matures, which is really exciting. Um, I think one of the things that's been talked about a lot earlier today, I think Sri from the Met Museum talked about it a bit, was the value in understanding who your guests are, right? Or in their case, for the Metropolitan Museum, understanding who their visit visitors are, right? In their case, they used a mobile Wi-Fi check-in, and we've seen lots of companies, particularly in the early stage, C to Series A to Series B, look at doing that. And I think that's important because that allows you to then remarket and then engage with your guests. Therefore, reducing the cost, the distribution cost that historically had within hotels generally, with that of OTAs, upwards of 20 or 25 percent. In fact, the stuff that I think is really, really exciting is actually giving hotels the power to book directly with their guests. And that's what's happening in terms of the back end of this hourglass, at least at the top of the funnel. Now, I think one of the things that's also really, really great is when you think about local and travel and you combine them, once you get in destination, the difference between a traveler and then a local, it doesn't really exist, right? I think Marty was saying earlier that uh, there, is no business, there is no business traveler, it's a business plus a leisure traveler. And I think that can be this, the same thing said here in this case. What's really, really great about this category, and I think I've talked about it with a few entrepreneurs, they find that if they build in the local economy, largely now we're in the, in the, in the front end, we've flipped it around on the back end here, what they find is that uh, there's really, really great ways to then get use and utility out of these products, largely around a few things. One, in terms of the restaurant booking, which is, say, a mo more frequent and repetitive product than that of travel, which we're seeing companies build in that. A really good example of that is um, MyTime. MyTime is a scheduling product that basically helps any type of small business basically take uh, new inventory from new guests and new customers. Right? So it's actually yielding better revenue and more efficient revenue than they've ever had before. And the other thing that's also really exciting is that when you think about this category, uh, the category of being able to understand who your guests are also applies to the small businesses as well. So two products that I think are really, really exciting. One of those is called Copilot, which was recently acquired by OpenTable. And what Copilot basically helped restaurants do, it sat on top of the point of sale. Point of sale system is like a micros here, and basically helped 
uh, you know, understand sales intelligence, understand who their customers were. And that's a really, really big important aspect when you think about that type of company. Avero is another one. Avero is in about 20,000 properties right now across hotels and small businesses. Same thing. It's almost like Google Analytics that probably a lot of you guys here use. It's almost on steroids for the real world. But I think the, the, the biggest area here is, for us, the back end is really the emerging opportunity. right? And I urge all the entrepreneurs in the room right, really to think about that. Largely, there's, there's, there's ways to consider how you want to raise money and the reasons you want to raise money. But sometimes, I think if you take a look, at least from this framework as we've thought about it and worked with a few entrepreneurs on, on it in the portfolio, I think the biggest thing is that um, the, 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 the categories that, that we get excited about as investors largely are those where um, you, they're not, they're, not uh, they're, they're basically extremely defensible. And then also at the same time, I think when you think about the category here, it's those that are too weak to build in, it's too expensive to acquire customers, and it's also uh, it's one of those things where there's too little uh, repeat usage. So if you could think about that framework, that's really, really exciting, um, and it's something that we spent quite a bit of time on. So thank you very much. <laughs>